What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com back with another SketchUp extension tutorial for you. So in this video we're going to use a couple different extensions to create kind of a bent Vornois bridge. Before I get started, today's video is brought to you by the Mindsight Studios Holiday Sale. Mindsight Studios is the group that brings you extensions like Placemaker and Profile Builder and Artisan. Um, all of their stuff is 25% uh, off until January 15th. So if you're interested in that, go visit the SketchupEssentials.com slash Mindsight or visit the link in the notes down below. Now let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so in this video, what we're gonna do is we're basically gonna bend a Vorenois shape around a bridge profile. And so you're gonna need a few extensions in order to do this. And these are all free extensions. Um, you're gonna download JHS Power Bar. You're gonna want the Vorenois and Conic Curve extension, as well as the extensions Flowify and Weld. And so I'll link to all of those in the notes down below to where you can get those. But what we're gonna do in this case is we're gonna draw, we're gonna start off and we're gonna draw an arc. And I'm gonna draw an arc that's uh, 24 sides. And so to set the number of sides, you just tap the A key to activate the arc tool. If you see down in the corner, it asks you for a number of sides. And I think it defaults to 12 maybe. Um, what you're gonna do is you're just gonna type in 24 and hit the enter key. And you're just basically telling SketchUp you wanna draw a 24 sided arc. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw an arc with a width of 20 feet. And then I'm going to draw up, we'll give it a bulge of 10 feet, which basically brings that in here as a half circle. And so once we've created that, that's gonna be kind of the top of our bridge. And now we're gonna draw a couple of arcs that define the path. So I'm just gonna draw an arc out this way, and then another arc out kind of across this way. And so what I've got is I've got two pieces right here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the extension weld to weld these into a single line to create a path. Um, and so in order to do that, you're just gonna select these two lines and then you're gonna go up to the weld extension and you're gonna click weld. And what that'll do is sketch up or that extension will take that line and it'll merge it together to create a welded shape. And so now this is a single line that you can extrude an object along this path. And so now that I've got my arc, I'm gonna draw a line across the bottom so that I have a face. And if you didn't wanna do it this way, you could also use extrude tools to just extrude this line along this path. But in this case, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna click on this line. I'm gonna use the follow me tool to extrude this along this face. face. So I've got this long kind of curving shape. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete out the two ends. And so now I have a base piece, which can be the base of your bridge, and I have this curve along the top. We're going to use the extension Flowify to bend a shape along the face. And so I'm going to go ahead and erase out my default model just because it's kind of going to be in the way. But you can see how when I did this, this got broken up into a series of individual lines. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select them just along this arc here. So I've just got the lines of the arc selected and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna use the weld extension to weld this back into a single line. And the reason I want that is because I wanna get the length of this line because I want to, um, when, when we uh, draw a shape to bend along this and flowify, we wanna maintain the, um, we wanna make sure that our base face is the same length as this so you don't get a lot of distortion. And so I'll show you what I mean. So if you remember the way this extension works is you have three groups. So you have a target face, so I'm gonna double click on this. And before I even do that, I'm gonna move a copy of this line off to the side using the move tool in copy mode um, because I'm gonna use that in just a second. But I'm gonna double click on this face to select all the edges. Then I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna make that a group. And so this will now be my target face. So the face I'm gonna bend something along. And then the way Flowify works is you draw a pair of target lines um, to a flat shape. And so in a second, we'll draw our second line. But what I'm gonna do, if you remember the length of this curve was 31 feet two and three quarters inches. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw a line here that's 31 feet, two and did I say three quarters inches? I think I did. So I've got that face. This basically is the same length as this curve 
right here. And so what's going to happen is I'm not going to get any distortion because basically anything I bend along this face, as long as it make, meets this dimension, will fit nicely along this face. And so then the other thing I'm going to do is this line, I can look up here and it's 201 feet, 10 and 3 eighths inches. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to draw a line here that's 201 feet, 10 and 3 eighths inches. And then I can use the rectangle tool to close this out. And I'm going to go ahead and reverse the faces because you want the face of this object to be facing this. You want the white face of this object to be facing the same way as the white face of this object. And so then I'm going to double click on that and put it in a group. And I'm going to draw a line from this corner to this corner. And I'm going to put these two lines in a group. Because if you remember, and the other thing I'm going to do real quick before I go there is I'm going to go down to my outliner and I'm going to start labeling things. So I'm going to select this base face, I'm going to make that a group, and I'm going to call that just base. So now I know that that doesn't really have anything to do with my Flowify group. And I'm going to go ahead and hide that. And then now, I can go ahead and erase this line out, but I've got these three groups here. I've got my target face, I've got my target lines, and I've got my base face. I'm going to select all three of those and put them in a group. And so your outliner should look like this when you do this. And the way you can test to make sure that's working is you can go up to Extensions, Flowify, and you can click Impose Grid. If a grid shows up in here, then you've done it right. If a grid doesn't show up in here, you probably didn't set your groups up right. Take a look and make sure that you've got your target face, your base face, and your target lines. If the grid doesn't show up 99% of the time, it's because these groups aren't set up properly. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and save my model. Um, it's usually a good idea anytime you're using um, extensions to create complex geometry, or even if you're just a ways in and you don't want to accidentally lose your work, you want to make sure that you're saving your model because you can get a little bit of instability when you're doing this. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to generate our Vor and Wa shapes. And so we're going to use this extension. And this extension gets a little bit touchy. So, um... But what we're going to do is we've got this whole group in here, and we're going to hide it in just a second. But the first thing you're going to do is you're just going to draw another rectangle on top of this. So when you do that, then you can come in here and you can hide this group so you just have a rectangle that you're dealing with. So your Flowify is all set up. Now you're just creating the geometry that you're going to bend along this face. And so the way that we're going to do this is we're going to use JHS Power Bar's C Points at Vertex option. And basically what this allows us to do is this allows us to draw control points in our model or guide points. And guide points are basically just points in space that aren't actual geometry. They're basically just guide points that you pick and you put in a location. And so what we're going to do is we're going to take that, we're going to activate it. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put some guide points around the perimeter. Because what this is going to do is this is going to triangulate faces inside inside basically the perimeter option. So I'm just going to add some guide points in here just so that my triangulation will be kind of smooth. So I just added some guide points around the edge. Well now you're just going to add some random guide points inside your face. So I'm going to add these points in here and probably what we'll do is we'll run this extension and see how it looks and decide if we like the way that this looks. So what I've done right now is I've added all of these guide points and you can see they actually stayed selected. They stayed selected because I haven't clicked out of this this tool. And so you may have to come back in and select them if somehow they get deselected. But what we're going to do, because I don't think the Voronwa XY works very good on this one. Yeah, if for some reason that one doesn't work very well. I'm not really sure why. So what we're going to do is we're going to use this other one instead. We're going to use the triangulate points option. And that's going to go ahead and ask you for a layer name. And you can just click OK. Um, and that'll create a series of triangulated points in your object. And so what you're going to do then is that's all going to be inside a group. So the faces that are created, those are all inside of a group. Well, what we're going to do now is we're going to use this last option, which is Conic Curve in Face. And so when you select Conic Curve in Face, what it does, besides adding some weird geometry over here that we're not going to worry about right now, um, what it does is it basically will add 
these Voronois shapes inside your faces, and it's basically using math to place these. And you can see this is getting pretty close to these edges right here, and I don't really want that, because what I want is I want there to be some space in between these objects. And so you can see if you look down in the corner, um, you can set your offset and your number of points and your weight by pressing the tab key with this tool open. Well in this case I'm just going to tap the tab key. I'm going to go ahead and set my offset to 75 millimeters and I don't know how to change the units in this one. Um, everything else in my SketchUp is set to feet and inches but this one still shows up in millimeters. But we're going to go ahead and try this with 75. So now if I click in this face you can see there's a little more space in here. I want to see if I can get even more. Um, so let's see, maybe I can try to, let's go to 125 and see what that gives us. That gives us, that's why we save our model. So you can see how my model crashed when I did that. That's why we need to save this. This is really important because every time I use this for and wall extension, um, you can get it to create what you want it to create, but it seems like you get a fair amount of instability. And you can see how I'm gonna have to come back in here and add all my points again um, because that crashed. So just kind of a warning, when you're doing this, make sure that you save your model. Otherwise, you're gonna have to come in and redo everything. So, and I don't really understand why it's so unstable, but it is. So sometimes you just kind of have to be aware that something's unstable. And just kind of prepare for it. So I'm gonna come back in, I'm gonna create a few points along this face. We'll use the Voronois and Conic Curve. to create our triangulated points. And I'm gonna save again. I should have saved before I started adding all of these. And I'm basically gonna click inside this face and I'm gonna use this and we'll go ahead and we'll set this offset to um, 100, see if that works. There we go, that'll have to work. And so basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in here and I'm just gonna add all of these different curves into this object and I wish I could get a little more spacing in here but as of right now that doesn't look like it's gonna work um, you can definitely fool around with this to get better results but I think this will be okay for what we're trying to do here well now that I've got all of these what I want is I want to merge them with this face because you can see it adds them all in here as a group so I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna erase out all of these triangulated lines that were in here so this is one uninterrupted face there we go we'll try it again Okay, so the face is in here. So you're just gonna come in here and you're gonna erase all of these out. And be careful not to erase your edges. That's what I did there. And so now you're inside this group and you've got all of these Voronois groups. I'm gonna go ahead and delete that out. I'm gonna unhide the last, there you go. So you've got all of these Voronois groups inside this group. Well, what we wanna do is we wanna select this whole thing and we wanna right click and say explode. And so when you say explode, what that's going to do is that's going to explode this so that it merges with this face. So you can see how now if I click on this face, these are individual faces in here. And there's two ways you could go from here. The first way you could go from here is you could leave this all in here. And so maybe what I'll do is I'll create kind of an example. So I'm going to save my model. And I've been getting this message a lot in SketchUp 2018. Um, I don't really know what it is. Usually if you just click fix now, everything will get fixed. Um, but I'm gonna create a copy of this off to the side that we can use in a minute. But for this one, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in here and basically what you can do is you can select the whole thing and then do a shift double click. Um, and that'll deselect the edges and this big face it just leave you with this other these other faces So I'm gonna go ahead and delete those out. So that'll give me my kind of uh, That'll give me my geometry with all my curves that has the holes in it And then all we're gonna do is we're gonna push pull that and give it a little bit of thickness So in this case, I'm gonna go ahead and give it a thickness of six inches And one other thing you may want to do is you may want to select all of this and use the soften edges option over here to smooth out these edges so you can check this box for soften coplanar then just drag the slider until all those extra lines kind of get hidden out and so now 
what we have is we have this object and it's already in place that we can use for Flowify. And so I'm going to go back and I'm going to unhide this target group that I had. And so what I'm going to do now, I'm going to go ahead and call this something else. I'm going to call this Vorenwa Skin. And then we can rename this other one and call it the Flowify group. That way you kind of know what everything is over here in your outliner. So I'm going to go ahead and click the save button and what we're going to do is we're going to select this group with our skin and then this group with our Flowify group and we're going to go up to extensions, Flowify, we're going to click Flowify. And what that's going to do, and that's going to take a little while, um, is that's going to take this object and it's going to bend it along this face. So now what we have, if you hide your Flowify group, is you've got this Vorenois shape that gets bent along this face. And you can see how it's a little choppy in here because what it does is it brings in all of this geometry as unhidden geometry. Well, all you're going to do is you're going to do the same thing where we use soften edges and just move the slider until all that extra geometry goes away. And again, you may have to check this box for soften coplanar and don't drag it too far because that'll smooth everything too and you don't really want that. That looks kind of funny. But basically what you have now is you have this bent Vorenois shape along this face. Then you can unhide this base and you could come in here and you could model structure or do whatever you want, but that's how you can create this organic shape. And one other option that you have when you do this, and I'm going to go ahead and move this stuff off to the side after I save my model again, is if you remember a minute ago, I said that the other option in here is you could use this face in order to do this. So I'm going to unhide my Flowify group and I'm going to move this object over here. And then I'm going to hide my Flowify group again. Well, what you could do in this case is instead of instead of erasing all of this out, you could push pull it to give it a little bit of thickness. So we'll give it a six inch thickness again. And you can go ahead and soften your edges like you did before. But what we could do instead now is we could come in here with a material like a glass material. So you could go down to materials, glass and mirrors, and you could pick like this translucent glass. And you could apply that to all of these faces. And so if you wanted to, you could make this an enclosed bridge instead of a bridge with all the holes in it. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to unhide our Flowify group. We're going to save our model. Notice how I'm really focusing on saving our model before we do anything now. But you're basically going to select this object. You select your Flowify group. You do Flowify, Flowify. And give it a minute to bend all of this. And so you can see how that, that gets brought in here. And we're going to do the same thing where we hide our Flowify group and we're going to go ahead and soften all of these edges again. Oops, I think I hid the wrong group. We'll go over here and hide our Flowify group. And so you can see how this has the same issue that we had before. So we're just going to use the soften edges option again to soften that. And so you can see that gives you a really smooth shape and if you wanted to you could use an extension like Enscape or something like that um, to actually render walking through this shape. You could add people and you could do a lot of different things in here. So once you get an idea of kind of how you can bend this and how this works, you can use this to create a lot of different shapes. So that's where I'm gonna end today's video. Leave a comment below, let me know what you thought. Did you like this? Do you have some kind of cool ideas for what you could do with this? I just love having that SketchUp conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. Finally, if you like what I'm doing on this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Every little bit helps, even if it's only a dollar a month. You can check out that link in the notes down below. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.